Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. My lungs burned and my legs felt like lead. Only fear drove me forward. The forest was too quiet. I know that sounds ridiculous. Forests are supposed to be quiet. They're supposed to be serene and tranquil. This just wasn't that kind of quiet. It was solemn. It was cold. It was cemetery silence, not natural silence. We'd hiked for several years by that time. I knew precisely what the forest was supposed to sound like. I was hiking with Mark when it happened. We lived in the middle of the Blue Ridge Mountains, so hiking was just a custom. It was accessible and free perfect for two younger guys. We never traveled the same route twice without reason. This one started like most others that weren't particularly exciting. We assumed it would end that way. Our trail eventually faded, like our energy. It was dusk and we had hiked for hours. The trail was there one minute and reclaimed by nature the next. We could always just go back the way we came, but it would be well into morning before we reached the car. The approaching twilight cast long, eerie shadows over the countryside. It didn't help that my nerves were on edge, but I didn't say anything. I assumed it was just fatigue. I was sure a good night's sleep was all I needed. The contrast between rustling leaves and snapping twigs and the absence of animal sounds made it worse. I clung to the hopes that, at any moment, we would emerge on the bald of the mountain. Then we could stop and sleep. I don't understand why this is taking so long, Mark said, his voice barely a whisper in the stillness. I was certain I had it mapped out correctly. Maybe it's just the climb, I answered. Maybe it just feels longer than it really is because so much is uphill. My words were hollow, but I didn't want him to know. It was absurd. We knew there was nothing out there to prompt any kind of fear. Our discussion briefly went back and forth. It was clear he was just as exhausted as I was. Twilight had lost its battle with night, and the countryside continued to darken. We decided to stop at the next suitable clearing and get some well-deserved sleep. We should find a place to set up camp soon, Mark said. I nodded in agreement. We scanned the area for a suitable spot. That's when we first noticed it. It was a perfectly innocent, flickering light in the distance. We both thought that was odd. We were a long way from any official trail. Few hikers left the safety or ease of the established trails. Our curiosity was piqued. We assumed it was fellow locals. There weren't many of us who traveled in these long-forgotten woods. It was always interesting to meet others from the area who were like-minded. We'd found several interesting trails just by talking with other hikers. The light grew larger and brighter as we approached. It was a little large for a simple campfire. We also begin to hear the faint sound of chanting on the breeze. The hairs on the back of my neck stood as we crept closer. Something was off. Something didn't feel right. I believed Mark sensed the same thing because he moved as cautiously as I did. We peered through the thick underbrush and abruptly stopped. It wasn't fellow hikers. We watched a circle of hooded figures gather around a roaring bonfire. Everyone's face was obscured by shadow. The air was thick with the acrid smell of burning herbs and something else something foul and decaying. We exchanged a quiet glance. I was certain my eyes carried the same mixture of fear and fascination as Mark's did. We had stumbled upon something sinister. If I had to guess, I believed it was a witch's Sabbath. There were six or eight individuals around the fire. There were two small objects suspended over the flames. They appeared to be small animals. There was a large object also suspended. It had to be a cow or a sheep. It was too charred to make out. They were all held in place by thick chains. The chanting grew louder and more intense. The figure swayed in unison. We watched in horrified silence as one of the witches stepped forward. We couldn't tell if any of them were male or female. They raised a gnarled staff high above their head. The fire flared. It cast grotesque, dancing shadows that writhed with a life of their own. We need to get out of here, I urgently whispered. Mark nodded. We backed away slowly, careful not to make a sound. But as we turned, I stepped on a dry branch that made a loud crack. The chanting abruptly ceased. The forest fell into an oppressive silence. My heart pounded in my chest as I heard the rustle of robes and the soft thud of footsteps approach. 
Run! Mark shouted. We bolted through the underbrush. Branches clawed at our clothes and skin. The witches gave chase behind us. Their inhuman cries echoed through the trees. My lungs burned and my legs felt like lead. Only fear drove me forward. We stumbled and fell. We scrambled to pick ourselves up and continue deeper into the dark forest. It felt like we had run for hours when we emerged into a small clearing. By then we were panting and exhausted. We prayed we had lost our pursuers. But the sight that greeted us was far worse. The clearing was surrounded by hooded figures, not just six or eight, but fifty or sixty. All of them turned to face us with malevolent grins. We had run straight into the coven. Panic surged through me. I grabbed Mark's arm and yanked him in the opposite direction. We were surrounded. The witches closed in from all sides. Their eyes glowed with an unnatural light. I felt their malevolent energy press down upon us like a suffocating weight. Desperation gave us a burst of energy. We charged through a narrowing gap in their ranks. We ducked and weaved as we fled. The forest twisted and warped around us. The trees closed in as if they tried to trap us. I heard Mark's ragged breathing beside me. We couldn't keep it up much longer. We were just too damn tired. My spirit diminished with the last of my energy. Just as I thought we were next to hang over the flames, we burst onto a narrow dirt road. A car was parked a short distance away. We sprinted towards it. The driver, a lone traveler, looked up in surprise as we banged on the window and begged for help. Please get us out of here, I pleaded. I glanced back at the forest where shadowy figures lurked at the edge. The driver must have seen the terror in our eyes. He quickly unlocked the doors and we scrambled inside. As the car sped away, I looked back one last time. The mysterious figures retreated into the darkness of the forest. We escaped, but the memory of that night would haunt us forever. We had seen the true face of evil, and we knew that the witches were still out there, waiting for their next victims. Was the driver really with them? He didn't state why he was parked out there, and we didn't think to ask. Was that large object over the fire an animal? Or a person? We tried to speak with the authorities some time after. They said they visited the area, but only found ashes. We stopped hiking after that weekend. Mark moved away for work. I haven't talked to him in years. I still wonder if the witches meet there. Every time someone in the area disappears, I remember that weekend, and how we almost disappeared too. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share to keep fascinating content coming here at Nightmare Nexus.